Welcome, little readers. It's Miss Gisa, and today I have a very special guest. Please help me welcome author Joanne Roach Evans. Welcome, Joanne. Hi, Miss Gisa. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you. Thank you for being here to share your new book, Marine Birds, as well as all of your other books. Um, Joanne is a professor an artist and an author. She's written and illustrated four books in her nature series, um, Seashells, Treasures from the Northeast Coast. Her newest book, Marine Birds from the Northeast Coast, Marine Animals from the Northeast Coast, and Seaweed from the Northeast Coast. Joanne, you're obviously from the Northeast Coast. Can you tell <laughs> us a little bit about yourself and where you're from? I'm from Massachusetts. I'm from central Massachusetts. Um, and I, even though I'm about an hour and a half to two hours away from most beaches, we are able to go to beaches in Maine and New Hampshire and Cape Cod and Rhode Island and Connecticut. So they're all within about two hours. So in a way, even though I'd love to live on the coast, I'm very lucky because it's afforded us sort of access to a lot of different beaches in New England. And that's what inspired these books. But um, yes, I've been writing children's books for a very long time, ever since I was a little girl. I wrote my first book when I was about in fourth grade. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. And I've done a lot of different things between that declaration <laughs> and now. But it always, you know, I always wanted to come back and do the books, you know, even though I had children and whatnot and got busy with work. It was always my dream. So for all our little listeners, if you heard that, Miss Joanne started writing books when she was in fourth grade. So mm -hmm. you just knew that that was a passion of yours and that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. My, I used to draw a lot. And my grandmother, my meme, was very um, supportive of me drawing. And she would send me cartoons to draw in the mail. And then I would draw them. And then I would send them back to her. I wish I had some of those. But oh. anyway, she was very encouraging. And then I started to write. And of course, it all started with my love of reading. I remember learning to read because I think I came to it a little late but it must have been around first grade. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But I remember finally being able to sound out those letters. And I thought it was magic. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. It's so exciting. I, yeah, I think reading was really, you know, just one of my loves. And then the artwork. And I can remember starting to write poetry. Probably around the same time. I had a little tiny notebook and I had a special pen. And I would write my poems all the time. And it's funny because I think my first poem was inspired by um, music, by lyrics that I would hear. It's actually a Sam Cooke song. This goes way back, but <laughs> I wrote a poem and it was very much like the song. And it wasn't until years later that I go, oh my gosh, that was that Sam Cooke song. But anyways, yeah. So I always wanted to draw and I, and I like to write from an early age too. So, so when you when you start to come up with an idea for for a book or a story, do you because you illustrate and write your stories, um, do you start with the illustrations or do you start with the words on the page? In the first dozen books that I wrote prior to these, um, it was a story and then it was the illustrations. But with seashells, it was a painting. I did a painting of the seashells that I have a nice collection over the years going to different beaches. And so I have this nice collection. And I remember thinking, you know, I really want to paint what I love. That's really where it came from. And so I started to paint things about the ocean and, thing, and I started to paint my shells. 
And that's when it dawned to me, I thought, you know, I don't ever remember having a, like a book about what these names are, all these shells are, because I didn't even know when I first started all of them, I knew some of them. And of course we had different names for things that weren't actually accurate. <laughs> we used to call jingle shells, toenails, things like that. Um, that <laughs> So my parents really didn't know. They could tell me some basic things, but they didn't know the names that much. So um, anyway, so once I started to learn, I realized, wow, there's a lot more to this. There's a lot that I didn't know. And that was a lot of fun, too, was just learning about them. But it did start with the artwork. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And that's, um, you know, I teach preschoolers and, and that's how we start with them because a lot of them can't write yet. Um, so we start with having them draw their story and then help them put the words down. Wonderful. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So when you're writing your books, which part of the process do you find most challenging? I go back and forth. It becomes one thing informs the other. I may do a painting and then I start writing. And, but you know what the most challenging thing I think was making sure everything's accurate. Mm. The research really was making. And then when I would look at different books, one book would have one name for a thing. Another thing would have, another book would have several different names different sources had different names for things. So I really had to do my research and make sure it's accurate. So I'd say the hardest thing is the accuracy that I yes. want to make sure that everything's true and factual. Yes. Especially since you're writing books about science and, and the oceans, right? Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> do you, uh, do you find it uh, challenging to do both the writing and the illustrating for your books? Sometimes, but I don't know if I could do it any differently now because mm -hmm. a lot of times what happens is I might flush out the idea, like I might write a rough, and then I there's several places where I have to leave it open to the research end of it. And a lot of the research happens to be my experiences. So in the marine birds, for instance, well, this is different things happen in the marine birds. My great nephews, my two great nephews, this is Noah, excuse me, Noah and Lucas. And they said to me that they wanted to be in a book. And I said, okay, well, I, I don't know where you're going to end up, but maybe you will, you know, in other words, it's really about the birds. So I wasn't sure. Well, we were all together on the beach and they were having their sandwiches. And meanwhile, a big gull, black back gull came flying in with somebody's sandwich, not, not my nephew's, <laughs> somebody's sandwich in its mouth in the plastic bag. The scary thing is it then gulped the entire bag and sandwich. Oh no. <laughs> so that ended up being, I didn't write that that's what happened. I did read for anybody who's worried because we were all worried for the bird. Yeah. That they actually can regurgitate things that 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 they cannot digest unfortunately wow. sometimes they can't but they can but you but he had to gulp it down because there were all these other gulls that wanted it so the way the way to get it out of their reach was to eat it so things like that will will creep into the book so right. i always have my camera at the beach and we take a lot of photos and so that becomes a big basis of my research for my artwork and for the story. Yeah, that's fabulous. So you use what, you know, you use some reality of what happens with the people who are around you and those make it into your stories. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, because I always don't have kids in it. I don't always, they don't, I, I don't always include them, but because I included Lucas's sister, <laughs> so I get pressure from my family they want to be included <laughs> that's Erin that was a, just a natural one let me see okay it was this one yes so this was my again my great niece and you really can't see her face but we know that's Caroline right and I knew I wanted the opening of the book was you may have heard about the beach and so then I thought well I need I thought you know have someone with a postcard 
and we happened to be at the beach and I said, will you pose for me? So oh, it's a real cool. process. It's, it's back and forth. It's fun. It's a lot of fun to include the kids too. They do like it. Now, why do you feel books about marine life are important for children? I think it's important to know about the seashore. It's such a unique environment, right? Yes. And when I went, I was just very interested. I'm very curious. I was a very curious child. I'm a curious adult. And I wanted to know about different animals and different things. So I feel that a lot of times kids go to the beach and they maybe get a pail and maybe they find a starfish or maybe they find a crab. And it's really not wise to keep them in that pail for very long. And things like this, I didn't know. So there's a big... Um, you know, I want not only to teach them different names, but to be aware of what what these critters, what these creatures are, and to kind of have some respect that they, you know, they deserve to live. And a lot of times, if you take them out of the water, they will die. Yeah. So some of them can handle it for a little while, but I do it's I do try to subtly sneak that message in there. You know that um, it's important. It's important. Yeah. So it's like seashells. Like it wasn't really a heavy message, but there is a note in there. Don't keep like the periwinkle if it's alive. Right. Um, but really, it comes down to all of it. I don't want anyone to, to take anything that's alive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so how, how can parents use your book to teach children about the plants and animals species uh, that live in the Northeast and, and anywhere for that matter? Well, if in my books in particular, I feel like they can be read as a bedtime story. Mm -hmm. I feel like that you can um, read it as a little story and it's just, it's not all facts. Hopefully right. my aim was it was a flow to it and that um, it made sense. And I wanted to keep it simple so that you could know sort of the basic animals, the basic seaweed that you would find, the birds, the most familiar birds, because it's right. tough because I want to include more. So right. Um, parents, you know, I think will introduce the, some of these animals through the books, mm -hmm. but they can also can hopefully invite questions, not only for themselves, because I think parents can learn a lot from these. For I know, sure. I, know I learned I, a lot. <laughs> in researching them, right? And there's a lot more to learn. So I feel like this is a good base and hopefully um, excites their interest to know more. Because these books, even though they, they're for a younger child, they can also go for an older child. In other words, they hope can stimulate the fact that, oh, there's so much more to learn. There's more things I can know. And yeah. with parents, I guess that's the jump, you know, this is the base and they can go from there. I also always try to include links in the back of the book to other books that I found helpful and to YouTube sites that are helpful. Yes. And I think if, um, you know, many, many families uh, travel to the, to the Northeast, right, to visit family or maybe they're living there. And so as an educator, I think it's great to, if you're going to visit the seashore, what a, what a wonderful resource um, to be able to bring this, these books along and actually like, what can we find today? You know, what, what birds are we going to see? What treasures are we going to find on the seashore? Um, and then have, you've done such wonderful research with the, with the scientific names so that they actually know what they're called. I have a very good editor too. So <laughs> she's a marine biologist and I rely on her heavily, especially on the seaweed book. Yeah. She's actually my niece too. And she, she actually appears in the seaweed book. Um, I had a, a photo of her as a kid. She's so cute. This is Erin. So oh, this is when cool. we'd go to the beach together. Um, we, I come from a very big family. And so we would all be together. And Erin is the one that said to me, will you do a book? I had done the book of seashells and she said, you should do a book about seaweed. And I said, oh, Erin, what am I going to write about seaweed? I didn't have the inspiration. So I have to say that was her. And what happened is I went to the beach that year and suddenly a beach that we normally go to that is seaweed free, really doesn't have a lot of seaweed, had a lot of seaweed that year. And I said, okay, all right. So I started to photograph it, everything that I saw. And um, 
when I got home, I started to paint it. And I said, I love painting seaweed. It's oh, beautiful. It is. And actually, I hope that kids would see that in adults that it's really rather beautiful. It's, you know, we may go, oh, don't touch it or whatever. But it's really beautiful. And it's really important to the seashore. To life. It at really the is. It really is. When I was teaching my kids about the ocean and the seashore last year, I learned so much about how important it is uh, to that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you'll ever write about um, marine animals and plants on the West Coast? I don't know. I would okay. have to, I would love to, but I feel like, like part, you know how they say, write what you know? Yes. Part of this series was this, it was regional because this is what I know. This is what I could experience. And it wasn't just a couple of years of experience. It was a lifetime of experience. Yes. Yes. Being a really close connection to the, the beach. Yes. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, you just never know, right? If uh, it would have to have certain circumstances that would support that. I mean, there may be somebody on the West coast that'll watch this and say, I can do that. Well, I'm planting, I'm planting the seed for you. Because okay. <laughs> it doesn't have to necessarily be me. It could be somebody else. It could be. Absolutely. It, right? Yes, yes, yes. There is one that's done very well in story form. Um, um, but I, I would like to see more because I, I think there's, there's more to write about. I will definitely consider that. All right. All right. Well, do you, on that kind of along the, so, those same lines, um, do you have more books that you are thinking about adding to your nature series? I do. I have one in particular. Okay. I had a couple, but I think that this one may encompass a couple, a couple different things. This, okay. And it may be the final one in this particular series. Okay. But okay. Again, when, it all depends what happens. Is it a surprise or can you tell us a little a bit about the topics? I was thinking of wildflowers. Oh, okay. Wildflowers, yeah. Wonderful. Yep. And we'll see. We'll see what else gets into it. But that's my what I'm thinking about right now. I have other books too that I've been that have been waiting for me to get to. And they're a little different, but of course they're about nature and the animals. Right. So we'll see. But yeah, I would probably tend to want to do this one in this series next. Well, we will look forward to that next book. Um, Joanne, can you tell the, our families and viewers, um, where can people buy your books? And um, you also have a YouTube channel. Um, so can you speak about both, how people can find more uh, about you? Okay. Um, well, you can get the books via my Etsy store. E-T-S-Y Etsy, if anyone's not familiar with it, then you, there you can get a personalized signed copy. Otherwise, you can go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or most bookstores should be able to get it because I, I'm talking with different bookstores and they're able to get it through their distributor. So if you prefer to go to your, your own bookstore, um, then by all means, you can ask there. If you don't want to wait, Amazon will have it you know, in a day, right? Um, and I do have a YouTube channel. And every time I go to the beach, pretty much every time I go to the beach on the pretty much on the Northeast coast or New England, I, we do a video and I like to tell people what I'm finding. This is what I'm finding. And, and a little, and I'll tell you a little bit about the, the animals, mostly the focus on, on seashells though, because that's where I started. And then I try to sneak in a little bit here and there about other animals and seaweed too. Yes. Well, for everybody, I will link uh, your Amazon uh, book, the books um, below Thank this you. video, and I'll also link your Etsy uh, and your YouTube channel. And I do have a website. And, and your website. Yeah. And on the website, I make sure I, you know, my events are listed there. My artwork is on that. Uh, links to Etsy and links to the different books. I'm trying to think if you, if you even Google Joanne Roach Evans, there are many things on the internet that would come up. Yes. And that's how I found you. <laughs> and Instagram, right? Right. Instagram. And, and then I found your, uh, your website, uh, in a Google search, but I will, 
I will link everything here, your Instagram, your Etsy. Uh, that way it'll make, make it easier for our families to find you. Thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate it. Joanne, thank you so much for being here with us. And um, for all our little friends, uh, you, will, you can listen to me reading um, Miss Joanne's Marine Birds uh, today and um, also uh, her other stories in the upcoming weeks. Thank, thank you, you, Joanne. <laughs> thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you do the readings. <laughs> thank you. And I look forward to uh, purchasing your future books. All right. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.